My name is Bruno Opic and I'm the senior key expert for distribution grid applications. So uh, my domain know-how is especially for the utilities supplying the big power to the industry so they can produce and also for the big industrial companies to distribute the energy within their premises. And if you have a look to these applications, we have a, f have a lot of uh, different devices uh, there already deployed. So in the middle you can see, for example, a big transformer, high voltage to medium voltage for companies like uh, BASF. Or you can see switchgears on the left hand side. Uh, they are operating, controlling and uh, monitoring the current, the power flowing into the process. And on the bottom of this slide you can see the already used intelligent devices like protection relays, Siemens brand is Seaprotec, or power quality devices, remote terminal units, Siemens brand is Seacom, and also the switchgears and the transformers I already mentioned. These devices are already connected to SCADA systems, power control systems, to process control systems. So. Uh, the question is, what do we need a IoT connectivity for? But if you have a closer look to what we use out of these data, it's just 5%. Yeah? That's the typical data an operator needs for an optimized production. An operator needs to control a power grid so the supply is secure to private premises. Just 5%. So the question is, for what reason do we have the additional data? Today, due to the bandwidth of the connections to the SCADA systems, we use only these 5%, but we have undiscovered values there. And with this additional information, we can detect very early grid anomalies. So outages could be prevented. Um, we also, in case of a fault, can immediately detect a precise fault location, so the repair time can be reduced from approximately three hours, that's a typical uh, uh, statistical value, to 30 minutes. Yeah? A huge improvement. Asset monitoring. We have uh, a lot of gear already in the market, and uh, they are running since, let's say, 20, 30 years. And the typical question of our utility customers or the industry is, how long can it all, uh, still be operated? Is it 20 years more or 10 years? So we need more information out of these devices. And today, to be honest, we have our lab test certificates, so we can give the customer information about what is our calculation for the lifetime. But if the device is operated, for example, at minus 25 degrees, maybe in Norway, a harsh winter time. Is it really then still uh, in good condition if the traveling time is maybe five seconds and typically it's three seconds? Is this a problem or is it just due to the weather? That's what we can learn out of this live data and do based on that predictive maintenance and in general uh, asset management for all these components deployed in these large areas or in the industrial premises. So for 95% data to be discovered out of our devices, but this is not the end. We have a lot of applications running out there and we do with our technology, what we can do, for example, a protection relay is tripping and tells us in 20 kilometers distance there is the fault, but maybe the cable is split into three valleys. Three times 20 kilometers is possible, so where it is. And typical technical approach in the past was, oh, we add more sensors. New approaches, we use new data. Maybe in this area we use wooden poles and the snow presses in the winter time against these wooden poles. If there is a problem, we could see due to the uh, slope and to the amount of snow whether the poles might be endangered in this area or not. Or think about flooding and other information, which is typically available in the internet by official authorities, and we can use this due to use of the cloud. 
<coughs> and there is a lot of more information in the world. I mentioned weather data, but we can also use, in a specific project we have used already, uh, the population of wood, uh, wood pickers. Yeah? So there is information for out of uh, intelligent buildings and these uh, other applications. And what we see for the IoT connectivity in this huge ecosystem is that we read a real standardization. Otherwise, everybody is talking in a different language, and you always have to have a translator, uh, in technical words, a gateway. And this consumes power, this consumes processor, uh, or produces processor load. And at the end of the day, we do not learn more than we would have with the poor data. Pure data means we want to have the information and not a handling of the data. And our statement in, in this point is there is a foundation, OPC, Open Process Communication Foundation, which is really pushing for standardization. And the latest development, still not finally signed, is the so-called unified architecture. And the procedure to connect devices is publish and subscribe. It's not only a, a community, it's a real international standard already. So it's called IEC 62541, an international standard. Like other standards we have in our uh, energy industry for communication, the, one of the the highest goals of our utilities and also in the industry is to have no vendor lock. So with this standardized communication, we really assure that we are open to connect to any cloud and to connect any device to our cloud. Any device, any cloud means we have to have a, a very strong focus on security as well. And security means that we are compliant to all the standard procedures uh, which are required in the industry and in the utility environment. So what we do is a secure onboarding of our devices to be really sure that the right uh, device is connected and has the connection rights to be in our cloud. We also uh, are focusing very hard on end-to-end -end encryption from the sensor to the cloud and also to the human machine interface on uh, any computer or tablet you're using. And what we as Siemens can ad additionally add is we do have a third department, cyber emergency response team. This team is every day just trying as so-called white hats to hack our environment, to hack our devices, or to look at uh, Microsoft or other uh, operational systems uh, pages for vulnerabilities. And as soon as we have detected such a problem, we close it. Or we give a patch to the community to close it. And this is exactly why I'm uh, very uh, convinced about the cloud technology. If you have heard of this WannaCry attack, the patch was already delivered by the 28th of January, and the attack started in April. But the most of the patches have been not deployed to the devices. In the cloud environment, my third team will close the gap immediately as soon as the patch is available. So there is no time delay in deploying patches. Security, one of our highest standards we can uh, give. And at the moment, we are no, using no control direction. This is the part where the cascader systems, the process control systems are coming in. But we give advice, we give uh, information analytics to these process control systems to make them efficient, more efficient, and to make them more secure in handling the processes and the operation. So from IoT connectivity perspective, we have the step one which is enabling our devices with OPC UA pubs up with this IEC 62541 protocol. We add our devices in a secure way to the MindSphere environment. And last but not least, we have already standard apps available. Standard apps means we Siemens provide apps for our devices, for our applications. But as you know, the uh, MindSphere ecosystem is open, so customers or third-party companies are able to add their own apps to make the world more uh, colorful, <laughs> put it that way. Well, 
one of the standard apps. I don't want to go through all of them uh, based on this uh, IoT connectivity is one of the shelf uh, diagnostic suite, especially the Zebrotec dashboard. I would like to invite you to our booth at the far end of this uh, stand and uh, see there what we can do in detail. Today, uh, here on stage, just a, a quick glimpse into. We have, for example, gas insulated switch gears in the in feed for uh, big industrial areas or in the power distribution. In there, our Zebratec devices with this IEC 62541 protocol, OPC UA pops up, and we are connected to the cloud. And the idea of this standard app is that every maintenance team is able to have this information directly, quickly on its mobile. Imagine you're on a very boring party, you're happy your phone is ringing, and you can see, oh, there is an alarm in the field, and you can directly see what really happened. Is it necessary to speed up and go there directly? Um, you're prepared what happened there, so you can uh, have the right equipment with you, and you can solve the problem as quick as possible. You can also see maintenance information in this tool, so we are really prepared for these maintenance teams to be as efficient as possible and to have all the information every time at hand. You don't have to go to the office, you have it really at hand wherever you are. Well, more applications, more examples. The next speaker, Ms. Dagmar Breilebens, will tell you and show you some of the use cases and the benefits more in detail. My statement here on stage is to say, if you go connected, if you use the Internet of Things with IoT connectivity, use a standard so everybody is able to join in with its data with, uh, to uh, analyze all the data in the cloud and the standard for the industry, especially for the en energy industry, is this OPC UA pops up protocol and, well, Use it. If you want to mo have more information, we are really happy to welcome you in our booth at the end of the stage. And uh, yeah, enjoy the fair further on. Thank you for your attention. Thank you also for the information. Bruno Optisch. Thank you very much. My pleasure.